Hello everybody, my name is Damilola Mike Bamiloye. I'm the writer, producer, and also the cinematographer of the movie The Train. Now this is the process behind the movie The Train. Listen, Mr. Mike, sir. What is it that you do for a living? This is my work, sir. I am a full-time drama minister. Hmm? So the train basically is a biopic of Mike Bamiloye, the true life story of, my, of evangelist Mike Bamiloye, and uh, um, also the story of how we met Mommy Gloria Bamiloye. It's a very beautiful story, and I know that if you watch it, you will be blessed. Please. I want you to marry me. I will, Alfred. Cut! Did he propose? Yes! He proposed! A man of God! Wow! First of all, I will talk about the miracle of the train. You know, going on set, there was nothing. We really didn't have anything. I we week to the film project, I looked at my account and I discovered that I'm not ready. I wasn't ready for a film project. And I was scared, you know. A few days to the film project, I discovered I had this embarrassing amount of money. I, I couldn't even disclose it. If you, ask, if you asked me how much is the budget, I didn't even bother applying any budget because I knew that this is beyond me. But something miraculous happened. And that's the fact that this movie is just divinely orchestrated. It's a divinely arranged movie. Because going on set, I discovered that God took care of everything. People brought in props. The cast brought in their own costumes. A lot of people brought in different things just to help make it work. You know, drama ministers, people who use drama as a weapon of acting, they came and they were serious. We, we, we all had, everybody was, we all had the same mind. We all had the same vision. We all had the same understanding, both the cast and the crew. And we're all working the same spirit, which is the most important thing, you know. So that helped a lot, you know. You know, so um, that was our, because I'll give you an example. There was a scene that had to do with um, <laughs> um, Yelena's room. And that Yelena's room, normally, if, if we settle down to really construct that room, it's going to be, you know, take out of the budget. But I discovered that I was just, someone just told me that the house close by. I mean, we went to that house. And entering the house, we discovered this room. It's already set there. Everything is set up already. The bed is just there. Everything is just there. You know, so all we had to do was just to clean up and just add our own little props. And we shot. And it was amazing. Because people thought we actually invested in that scene. We didn't invest in that scene. That's how the scene was. Same thing for um, Gwemini's room. When the young man, the tailor, you know, I was just walking through the passage, you know, close to Yaleni's room. I was just walking through that passage. There's a passage in front of the room, and I discovered this room. I opened the door and I saw the bed. I said, I saw everything. I said, and I told the director, I said, we must shoot in this room. Regardless, we must just, no matter what, we must shoot in this room. So I'll talk about the factors that helped to create that vintage feel. One of them, of course, was the grading. I thought the grading was important, and I thought the grading it was necessary, was necessary for me to imbibe a grading that is not too popular or is not too used. Because if I use the grade, the color field that people are used to, like the warm color field that everybody is used to, it won't give them the feel of this different era or a different generation. It will just be like if a regular film, like a film I watched yesterday and I'm seeing the same grade today, so it doesn't, you know, so I need to create a different grade that will just, in the mind of the people, give them a different era, a different, that's why I, I went for the um, blue, the cold feel. And that was the feel that was used at the beginning of, my, at, the, at the beginning of Abayomi's life, you know. Then, um, of course, the costumes helped. You know, that's, that there were times when Abayomi, the character, wore a dress and I had to correct that dress because that's not the kind of dress that my family wears. And I know my father well. I know the kind of, the kind of um, dress. I, I, like, I know the way he loves to appear. You know, so, so many times I helped the costumer by just telling them that, please, you need to change this dress. This dress is not too right for the character because I know the character doesn't wear this kind of dress. You know, so that helped to um, create that vintage feel. Also, of course, of other of all the you know, now this is a fun fact now some of the dresses that were worn on sets were the actual dress of the people 
some of the dresses that were worn on set were the actual dresses of the people. For example, Adikpeju. The dresses that Adikpeju were wearing, they, 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 that's the old Adikpeju acted by Lara Ayola, Amolara Ayola. He was actually wearing the real dress of uh, Mommy Adikpeju Adishinyo. Funny thing is that when she wore those dresses, it just gives her the, the vibe, the spirit of the real Adikpeju. And amazingly, thank God Adikpeju is still alive to see herself. You know, so she was even the one supplying us with these dresses. She was very much around on set when we were shooting the scene of, the, of Adikpeju. All the scenes of Adikpeju she was around. So she was supplying the dresses and everything. So it helped to create the character well. But did you not see um, Romaika and Stashula talking the other time? I saw them talk on Adikpeju. They were talking. Uh. He's only trying his luck. Eh? We are not sure. We are not too sure, sisters. What if Sister Shola agrees to his proposal? Eh? Uh -uh. Hmm. Sister Shola's class is too high for Bro Mike. See, I am I'm not gossiping. No. I am only trying to raise an altar of intercession for yes, Bro Mike. Yes, of course. My sister. Mm -hmm. Another fun fact is that some of the um, places that the... Some of the places we shot were the actual events what the actual places the events were, you know, for example, the place where Bayami went to see the old man, that room, that was the room it happened, the room where the man was telling Abayami that, I know your wife, I saw her in the vision, that room, that was the room it happened. The kitchen where Abayami had an accident, that was the kitchen it happened. The house of Abayami, the exterior, towards the end, you will see the house of Abayami. That was the house we grew up when, you know, when we were small, that was the, that's, that's the actual house, you know. So those things are just, just help to bring the story alive. The camera used to shoot the movie is the Black Magic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. It's, uh, and also we add some lenses that help to, um, to focus on the subjects and also to, to focus on the background. The reason why that is important was that we don't want to um, we want to just what, what we want to show is what we want the audience to see you know what that is basically all we want to show we want to show the people what we want them to see we don't want them to see things that are not planned for because it's a very very sensitive movie you know so if care is not taken for example if i end up taking that's why that's why sometimes i don't take wide shots because i know that if i take some shots for example wide shots in some scenes if the wide shot is not necessary you just end up showing the audience the wall clock that we use now you know, instead of props that are used back then you know so we needed to be intentional about our shots you know, so that's why we use some lenses like um, for example the sigma um, 18 to 35 millimeter which um which had an aperture of aperture of 1.8 and it was used just to focus i needed that lens to help me focus on some shots you know just to like i say give me this depth of field you know. Now, so the, the technical deep parts of the movie that I know that required us to do some tricks was, I'll give an example, and this, that's the cinema scene. To me, that's one of my most enjoyable scenes. Why? The reason is because we needed a cinema hall, and we couldn't get a cinema hall in Elisha. That, so what we did was, I was just thinking what we, what we could do then. We had to use... The stairs. If you remember the scene, the cinema scene in the train, that's the scene where Abayomi, um, Abayomi and his friend were watching this Chinese film and all that. You know, so that's that scene. It was shot on the stairs, you know, on the stairs. So we made our crew, the, our crew guys, sit in front of them, and we placed Abayomi and his friends, you know, somehow above them. So they sat on the steps, you know, because I know the cinema had this descending layer of chairs you know keeps going down so that's how the stairs is so we made them sit on the stairs and so we used as i said the lens helped to tell that story we used the photo uh, telephoto lens to capture what we needed to capture so if you look at that if you look at that scene you think it was actually it actually happened in the cinema no it actually happened in the stairs you know so on the stairs so we had a projector and the projector was a major source of light we beamed the projector on a flat board and the rest is history. <laughs> if I had people, what the people were watching, they were watching an empty screen, really. But uh, in post, we had to now put the fighting scenes there, you know. So that was how we were able to achieve that scene. You see, 
You thought I, I was backsliding, but I, I was only looking at the mirror. Hmm. Bra Mike, can we take this retreat a, a little further? Can we want to join you and look into the mirror? Can we come in? Mm. No, you can't. Why? Because it's it's a small mirror. It can can only accommodate a single face, right? Hmm. That's new. That's a deep revelation. My God. Everything about the movie is challenging, to be honest. From the script writing, that we go to different drafts, draft upon draft, just to get the right, the accuracy of the story. You know, my father was very particular about that, the, getting the accuracy of the story, especially my mom. She didn't want us to mess up anybody's story. So we had to go to draft upon draft upon draft. Even while we were on set, they were calling us, you know, telling us. Uh, my dad called us at a particular time. We were shooting the, um, in, we were shooting in Malaysia. What happened was the if you not if you watch the, the movie well, you notice a scene where Abayami was helping a, an, an elderly woman to carry yam, you know, and carrying the yam, it fell on the ground. The yam fell and scattered, and it started running, and the woman was shouting over the place. So that we, that was not in the script, but that just remember something that oh this happened when I was young. So he called us and said. Uh, this happened, so you had to add it. Getting the script was challenging, going on set was challenging, and um, editing was challenging. Every aspect of the production was challenging, but God saw us through. And you know, the amazing thing about the movie is that you know, you cannot tell the whole story of a man's life, you can't, but you get what we did was we selected the vital things, the most important details of Evangelist Mike Bamley's life, and that was what we enacted. Mab. It was a map. Map. Show look at the hours when he. Map. Mike, abayo mi ba mi loye. You mean no monje be mommy. So um, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for your patience. Um, please, if you've not seen the train, go on YouTube. Damla Mike Bamloye. You will see the movie, and I believe it's going to bless you. <laughs>